Father, we give you thanks this morning. We thank you for your grace and mercy upon our life to allow us to be a part of your world, your Lord God, and a part of your atmosphere. Oh Lord God, protect us from the atmosphere of men. Oh Lord God, this principality is a stronghold on what we're doing. Hallelujah. We'll continue during this morning in Acts chapter 15. Hallelujah. And reading verse 27 to 39, by God's grace, hallelujah. It reads, Now Barnabas was determined to take with them John called Mark. But Paul insisted that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. Then the contention became so sharp that they parted from one another, and so Barnabas took Mark and sailed to Cyprus. Hallelujah. It happens to the best of us. It happens to the best of us. There's always, some way, somehow, conflicts in a relationship. And a lot of times, the matter is one that we have to take before the Lord. The enemy is always looking for an opportunity to cause division and chaos and setback in that which God is trying to do for mankind. Here we see it's very apparent that, even though I don't remember reading earlier about this matter, but it's very, it very obvious here that Paul have a problem with Mark. And uh, whether or not <laughs> Mark was wrong or not, it's up to the Lord to make the judgment because vengeance belongs to the Lord. So for me, I could be wrong. But I believe some of the scripture in uh, Matthew, it says that you must love your enemy and pray for those who may despise or try to do whatever. But the Bible says you must love them. Love them. They don't want a person who offends you. It's very apparent here that when you look between Barnabas and Paul, Paul seems to be the one here who obviously is of, is vulnerable to be used as the enemy to be causing a problem here. Because Barnabas, regardless, the same issue, Mark did to both of them the same thing. But it seems the way Mark deal with it and the way Paul deal with it shows a level of spiritual maturity. Because Mark did it to both of them. But Barnabas apparently forgive Mark and love him by the commandment of the old scripture and take him with him. Paul, on the other hand, is almost that same old nature that he had before show up itself. That old nature that he had to persecute and cut people off and, 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 and all that happens to his old nature show up. Because this is a brother in Christ, apparently. Mark is a part of them. A believer and the Bible teaches us that we are to forgive the Bible teaches us that we are to love the Bible teaches us all these things that when it comes to the body of Christ there are things we have to do the Bible even teaches us that if a brother or sister in the body of Christ done something to you don't the Bible said don't even and you got about to give you a tight uh, your offering leave that offering and other thing go straight go straighten things out then you can come up and give your offering because then God will accept it. So Paul clearly here, for me, according to scripture, is in disobedience. His old nature show up. And the enemy was, was clearly, they're taking advantage of the situation. You know, so brothers and sisters, in any relationship, one of, one of us has got to be mature enough to say, uh-uh, time out. Take this for the Lord. I'm out. Because you see, a lot of times something is happening more than the, what the eyes can see. Because before this thing occurred, apparently, principalities and power was at work. Principalities and power was at work. In any conflict, 
before it manifests, it happens in the realm of the spirit. So it is very clear what happens here. Because Bob says, now Barnabas was determined to take them, to take with them John called Mark, which tells me that Barnabas forgives him and was mature enough to say, you know, come on, you know. Because apparently, whatever causes Mark at first to re, to be resistant, he, he probably have come to his senses now to realize, you know, this is the work of God, and now he's willing to go. And Paul, <laughs> if he was mature in, enough in spirit, he would have looked at the situation and said yes. And loved his brother and said yes, let's go do the work of the Lord. This is not about my glory, this is about the glory of God. So it's very apparent to you that Barnabas was more mature and forgiving and more in obedience to God's word and take Mark with him. But here in verse 38, it says, but Paul insisted, why Paul insists? <laughs> that they should not take with them the one who had departed from them in Pamphylia and had not gone with them to the work. So Paul had this man up. You have this man up as a child of God. I mean, even though you write most of the epistles of the New Testament, of which the church uh, in, in Nicaea chooses to put most of his epistles here, list of the apostles' work here, that doesn't make him much more holy than the apostles. And I believe Barnabas is one of them that walk with the Lord. Barnabas is one that walked with the Lord. So he, he have a clear understanding of the love of the Lord Jesus Christ. So Paul obviously here, he allowed himself to become vulnerable, to be used of the enemy to almost cause problems here in the church. And I hope somewhere along the line when I go down, I may read of it, of him asking for God's forgiveness for behaving like this and we all need to ask for God's forgiveness because at one point at some point in our lives we all behave like this you know we just get so get caught up in ourselves he did me this you know he did me that she did me this she did me that that's your brother and sister in Christ you do not know what's going on with them step back because you know it is not of the Lord for you to be in conflict with no brother or sister who is a part of the body of Christ. Mm -mm. We're supposed to love. Is it easy? No. Are you going to be challenged? Yes, at times. Are you going to get caught off guard? Yes, at times. But there comes a point where you got to come to your senses and say, uh-uh. Sometimes you got to rebuke your own self, slap your own self. Say, what's wrong with you? The old nature tried to show up because this is Paul's old nature, the old flesh. Go around killing Christians and cutting off Christian because they goes against his belief system. And here the old, his old nature show up. So he needs some work. <laughs> he needs a lot of work. In, in the name of Jesus Christ. So here in verse 30, 39, I mean, he, he was, I mean, he was so, I mean, very, I mean, persistent. I mean, if you talk about, it happened to the best of us. It happened to the best of us. Here it says then the contention. I mean, contention is a spirit. Demonic spirit. Contention. When the spirit of contention comes, it comes to divide. It comes to put the best of us apart. And it's always to to to, get, to set back what God's plan is for us. Because contention builds into anger, and anger builds into wrath, and it can become disastrous. The enemy is in this thing. I am telling you. To destroy the work and blessing and glory of God upon our lives. We, beloved, we out. We, that's why we have to stay prayed up and stayed in the spirit. Can you believe the, 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 this man, these men, who are led by the Holy Spirit, 
all of a sudden suddenly get caught, get caught up and forget the God's princess then that they should know and let's talk to God about this that's what it should be in the first place that's one thing I love when the Lord God talked about David that never matter David 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 uh, consult the Lord but yes like cannot even use David I honestly cannot clearly use David here I just got to speak by those spirit for myself I don't know about you I have to talk about myself because it happens to the best of us and even though it happened to these men we have to pray because it can happen to me and you. I'm telling you now. We, we I cannot sit here and say, I'm, 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 God, you know, the Spirit of God is so much upon my life when I ain't one of these men. Man, you do not know when. The enemy is such a strategist and he is so consistent. It's like he's looking for any pinhole to expand it. Give him a, there's a whole say, give him a hint, you take a mile. It happened to the best of us. So you cannot see this and say, ah. That could never happen to me. The moment you say that they mouth is the moment the devil is after you. And it make you it may make things worse than you even think or imagine. We just gotta pray that when we see this happen to these men, because when you talk about David, <laughs> the man after God's own heart, your David is, you know, home chilling <laughs> when he's supposed to go to war. I set up. Start walking around in his rooftop. Boom. Let me set him up. See some nice, some woman, and even when he inquired, started lusting. And even though he find out that this woman is a married woman, he was so caught up in the moment of his lust and arouse that no, nothing could stop him. Nothing in the world could stop him. If this man of God, who is a God of God, in that moment got so caught up in the flesh, the, the, I mean, the devil have him. There was no God for him in this moment to go consult or to go seek him. It, David was in the flesh. He was caught up to the point that he became a murderer. He murdered the husband in order to get man's wife. This is a man of God, though not. The man of God's own heart. Which tells me and you, beloved, <laughs> we have to ask for God's grace and mercy upon our life every second on every chance we get. Lord, please. When we read these things, we have to appeal before God. Because these are great people that we're reading about in scriptures. When we see the, how vulnerable we can become, how easily we can, we can become caught off guard, how easily we can become defeated. So we have to be constantly in the face of God and ask Him to constantly, please stay with me. Let this not be my portion. That may not be in contention with my wife. Let me not be so vulnerable to be in contention with my brother or my sister in the body of Christ. Let me not. Put yourself in that place. When you read this, don't point no finger nowhere. Look at yourself and realize that these men, whom God spoke of so much, that you ain't no greater than them. But when you see this, know that the enemy is always rightly looking for an opportunity to put you to shame and disgrace. But thanks be to a God who is a loving God and a forgiving God that when you come to your senses, you will seek for forgiveness. Because believe you me, if you think because of what this happened here, God, God forgive Paul, you're going to pay a price for it. You're going to go through a lot of shipwreck and all kind of things going to happen. David, you think the Lord did this Passover with David when he did that to that man? Oh no. He paid. Son got killed. His kingdom got divided and messed up. He had to be running for his life from his own, from his own children. The lives were lost. Beloved, God loves me and you. But when we do anything that goes against his will, 
Even though you ask for forgiveness and repent, he does hear you. And he does honor those things. But what you sow, you reap. The consequences is the, the natural law of things. It does the natural law and it does not change that. There are consequences. And the price can be heavy to the point that it can cause the life of someone in your lineage. May that not may that not be your portion going into this new year. Neither mine or none of us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Stay prayed up, stay armored up, stay consistent. I do not know what else to say, but ask of God and stay in the face of God and ask of him that this be not your portion, that the spirit of contention will not come near you, that you will not lay yourself idle to be used of the enemy. To cause you to become a murderer, a liar, a thief, or a deceiver, or whatever it is. Because there are consequences, beloved. What you sow, you, you will reap. And you want to make sure no matter what it is you sow, it is the good seed of God's word and blessings. So that when it returns, beloved, to you. Because consequences really, it's not only in terms of evil. You know, what you sow, you reap. If you're sowing good, what do you expect to reap? Good. If you sow bad, what do you expect to reap? <laughs> will be the bad. So consequences can be good. Consequences can be bad. Be a good gardener. And sow the right seed. To your action. And to what you speak into the atmosphere. May God bless you. As we continue this journey. In the word of God. Beloved. Into 2022. Lord God be with you. Bless you and keep you. Until we meet again. As I said beloved. I will never leave you without saying to you. Pray it up. Walk in the Holy Spirit, ask the Holy Spirit to govern and guide your life, your mouth, your hands, uh, give your heart, give him your heart, make sure your rules are reign in your heart, beloved, give him your stomach, make sure your rules are reign in your stomach, hallelujah, a healthy gut controls everything else about our being, give him your sexual organs, submit it to him, ask him to cleanse you and wash you by his blood and sanctify it, dear beloved chief of your man, may God bless you and sanctify you, submit your sexual organs to him, you have, if you have knowing that you have done some <coughs> some things to you that you're deserving of death, hallelujah. Or you may be right now being all kind of things that are going on with you in those areas, it's from prostate cancer to everything else. I believe if you actually submit this to the Lord Jesus Christ and don't go around, you know, dressed up and carrying on as if like you're healthy and still carrying on. Don't be a fool with that pride on your way to hell. Submit to the Lord. That he may wash you and cleanse you by the blood of Jesus Christ and sanctify you so that if you're not married, you may understand the importance of sin and the significance of marriage if you know you're having a problem in that area so that you don't get burned and get burned in hell. You go, same thing go for you, woman, whoever you are. If you're watching this right now, cervical cancer and all these things because you did not understand. You were just submitting to that urge and that feeling when it comes on. Whether it be once a month or once a year, no matter what, but you can't feel satisfying it because you did not want to commit to any marriage. And now you're paying the every price. I am, hallelujah. So I'm, my prayer for you is that as you pray to the Lord and submit those areas to the Lord Jesus Christ, where the enemy has been exploiting you and using you and making a, a fool out of you, that you submit it to the Lord God. I ask of him to cleanse you and wash you by his blood. And as you give it to him, the Lord God will remove those things from you and Leave those things in the past as you move on into the future in Him in holiness and in righteousness. The Lord God will do so for you. Amen. Submit everything. Your feet, your foot have been taken in the right in the wrong places. Let the Lord God become the lamp and a light unto your feet. Hallelujah. Not a darkness. <laughs> because if it become lamp and light to your feet, that means that your foot was in darkness. Was walking in darkness. Hallelujah. So may God become that lamp and light to your feet so you walk the path of holiness and righteousness in the mighty name of jesus in 2022 hallelujah and beloved one of the most things i want to talk to you about is these things called your ears hallelujah i know many of you who call yourself children of god does not realize that the gateway to your soul and your faith the bible says faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of god that means if what you are allowing or who you are allowing to be ministering to your ears or talking into you. Sometimes it's even you. You talk too much. 
and the things that you're talking that is going back to your own ears has nothing to do with the word of God. And it makes you vulnerable, your spirit vulnerable and weak. So that in times of trouble you have nothing to sustain, you have nothing to draw from, from the well spring of your spirit. You have nothing to draw from to strengthen you because you're, you're too full of yourself. You, 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 when you listen to the amount of things and you analyze at the end of the day the amount of things that goes into your hearing it has nothing to do with word of God so you're more faithless than you are of faith because the word of God has not gotten into your hearing into your soul amen so make sure going into this new year you commit yourself to the word of God so the word of God be getting into your hearing two songs through whoever you tolerate or even your own self is what you you are hearing the word of God that glorifies and magnifies and strengthens your spirit a lot of us our spirit are anemic our spirit are malnourished because the word of God it hungers for the word of God to get in there so we can become mountain movers hallelujah and when we see some things, we can speak to it and it move in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Because anything and everything, whether it be evil spirit or not, they can see your spirit to know whether or not you're of Christ or not. They knows you. When the Lord Jesus Christ was walking the earth and was ministering, that man who was in the man of gathering, who was in the tomb, the Bible says, he was chained. He was chained. Because there were so much demons in him, when they tried to chain him, he would just and break the chain because of the amount of demons in him. But when the Lord Jesus Christ showed up, <laughs> they cried out to him, "It's not our time yet. We, oh, if you know who you are, you are the only one." They, they see the spirit that was in Jesus Christ. All, like, they see all these people who was around the Lord <laughs> could not see his spirit who God identified him. But this spirit that was in that man identified and called out who he was. Hey, you're the only one of God. It's not our time yet. And because they know that he is their judge. It's not our time. They cry with him. And Lord God asked him, what's your name? <laughs> Say, our name is Legion. A legion means anything more than uh, 50, anything more than 100. That means that almost 100 and I had demons was inside this one man. And the Bible says in that moment, the Lord God cast him out and said, get out. Get out of man. The Bible said they get out of him and went into all them pigs. And them pigs begin to run for their <laughs> life. I guess from that day, nobody want to eat pig. Anyway, God bless you and keep you beloved. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, when you walk in the Spirit, be filled with the Spirit, protect your hearing. Like again, once I said, beloved, because that Spirit coming by hearing, you want to grow in faith and be strong. So you can even speak to demons and cast out demons because God has given it. That. That's that gift by the prophet, the Holy Spirit. In 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 4 to 11. Amen. Go read and choose. May you be blessed, especially this year, with one of those gifts so you can edify and strengthen the body of Christ. God be with you until we meet again. Amen and amen.